How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Wednesday on the show. You know what that means. We have got AEW Dynamite coming up tonight. We have a full lineup for the show, including the return tonight of CM Punk to AEW. We'll talk about that, the full lineup for the show here tonight. Obviously, last night was NXT. They're building up to stand and deliver. We had the finals of the Women's Dusty Cup on the show last night. So we have new Dusty Cup winners, and they did a swerve at the end, which we will talk about here today. we got a full lineup for Stand and Deliver. we got the full lineup for the WWE WrestleMania show, thus far at least. And they also announced today that WrestleMania will be airing in select movie theaters, which I have not done in a long time, but uh, probably 20-something years ago, we did a... I did a show up in in uh, like Cloverdale, British Columbia, or something like that. And uh, that afternoon, there was also a a uh, it was like a pay per view. Maybe it was a WWE pay per view. I don't remember. But the theater was this giant theater, it was shaped like a flying saucer. And so uh, we all went in there and we watched the pay per view in the movie theater on the big screen, and it was awesome. So I may have to uh, I may have to think about that if it's happening here in this area. Well, we can tell you about that if you're interested in going and watching WrestleMania in a movie theater, as opposed to going to the two-night event. We've got uh, news on new WWE deal in the Middle East. We've got the Raw ratings from Monday night, once again, as always, affected by Daylight Savings Time. NXT TV review and more. If you want to text us today, 425-780-7566 is the text message line. 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Former WWE champion Big E said he is grateful to be alive following what he described as a sobering conversation with a doctor. 36 year old revealed Tuesday via social media he was told the fracture he suffered to his C1 vertebra could have been catastrophic. Had my first doctor's appointment learning. Because of the C1 fracture, I narrowly escaped a stroke, paralysis, or death. It's very sobering. Life feels even more precious and valuable now. That's a C1. We talked about it when it happened. This guy's so lucky. He bro- he fractured his C1, and uh, not only like you know no uh, permanent issues of any sort or or no ligament damage, no surgery. So uh, it's pretty much a miracle. So, uh, miracles can happen to anybody. Good to happen to Big E. So, that's the update on him, and uh, no update on on when he'll be back, but uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah, a great reminder of how precious life is and how dangerous this business is. You know, forget about some of the things you see in just hardcore matches and all that sort of stuff. More plunders involved in wrestling than ever before, but still the basics. Some of these basics are still the same things that, you know, can can, can hurt you, you know, and that's it's it's again it's a miracle that he's in the the condition that he's in and, and to not have to go through surgery and just a again a, a good reminder for everybody in the business out of business that watches of how these guys put their lives on the line you know the nfl we rarely see even though it's a, every play there's the possibility of catastrophic injury and death and you forget about that because these guys are in such great condition and, and all that but it's Life is precious, and it's uh, it was a scary situation there for Big E, but thank God he's okay. What's up with your knee? <laughs> it's not as catastrophic as uh, as Big E's neck, that, that is for sure. And, uh, yeah, well, the, the swelling went down enough where I could get the MRI, so that's that, that's been done. <laughs> so, What's so funny? Small, I don't know, because the, the, what, fu- what the funny thing is is I don't know how it happened. Other than just being 46 years what? old. You woke up I and have, your knee was swollen? I have no... I, like, Monday, I was doing stuff on it. Went to work, no problem. Was doing stuff around the house. And then I took a nap Tuesday and woke up. and Because I, I couldn't take a nap because it woke me up. And I just... It might, well, you saw it. It ended up getting to the size of a cantaloupe. <laughs> and so I have no idea exactly what I did other than... Just existing and being old, so... I know what happened. Avery tried to take you out when you were asleep. 
Well, he was. Hopefully, he was at school during that time. Well, you don't know what happened when you were sleeping. Uh, a, wait, a, shouldn't he be at school now? That's a good point. No, he just got home. Oh, I forget. It's three o'clock where you're at. Yeah. You're older and you're further ahead in time. <laughs> Does that mean the end is near for so me? So you don't know what your MRI results are? They couldn't just tell you. Not yet. Wow. Yeah. Well, dude. God. <laughs> just got home. 20, 20, it's amazing when you 20, when you have to work overnight. And they can't tell you what your MRI results are. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> I just raced to get back here, dude. <laughs> what? So is it back to normal now? No, it's still swollen as shit. <laughs> it's no, it's still it, it's still incredibly Dumb. swollen, and it still hurts a lot. Dumb. That I can say for sure. I am so sorry. You deal with this. Dom was so happy yesterday when you were gone, <laughs> and he didn't have his finger on the dump button for one second yesterday. Now here he is. It hurts. All right. I'm sure it does hurt. You try doing this. I hope they, I hope they come back and go. Well, the problem is it's skinned. <laughs> as long as look, as long as nothing's torn, I'll be happy. I'll take you know. You, bursi- I already got arthritis in both of them anyway. So if it's bursitis and just cartilage or something like that, okay, that that's fine. Meniscus, uh, okay, I can live with that. If it's a ligament tear or something like that, that's surgery. That's money, and no, thank you. I mean, you don't have to get surgery. You could you could do the Frank Shamrock and just walk around with no ligaments in your knee. And I mean, you ain't I, fighting. I, well, that's true. I knew a guy who would run. I mean, he had no ligaments in his knees, and he would still run. And it was like the most. <laughs> it just looked painful. His knees looked more painful than anything. But he didn't want to get the surgery. It's amazing how people can walk around with no ligaments and torn ligaments like that and still function. It really is. All right, here's the lineup for AEW tonight. We got Sting and Darby and the Hardys against Private Party, Butcher and Blade. We have Adam Cole versus Jay Lethal. Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia versus John Silver and Alex Reynolds. They always add the Dark Orders. You ever notice that? It's never John Silver and Alex Reynolds. It's always Dark Orders. Like there might be two sets of John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Like there's another set that works dark that I'm unaware of. That are not in the Dark Order. <laughs> so this is the Dark Order's John Silver and Alex Reynolds tonight. We have Moxley and Brian Danielson versus the Varsity Blondes. Whatever happened to that angle where uh, uh, the the mist got in, uh, what's her name's eyes? Whatever happened to that? Well, wait a second. With the Dark Order, I mean, if it's the Dark Order's guys, shouldn't they go by their numbers in that case? And when it's not, well, they're not they're all not... numbered. Well, that's true, I guess. Colt never got a number. We got Red Velvet versus Layla Hirsch with Chris Statlander banned from ringside. And promos from MJF, CM Punk, and Thunder Rosa. You know, I don't, uh, this is not an AEW thing. This is a thing across all of wrestling. But it's one of those things that you just accept it because, you know, wrestling's a little bit dumb. But it is actually really dumb when you think about it. Chris Statlander is banned from ringside. Today. (laughs) But, like, no one is banned from ringside in any of the other matches. And, you know, next week I'm sure they're going to have a match and she's not banned from ringside. So it's like every now and then whoever's in charge is coming and goes, I've had one too many run-ins. So, damn it, in this one match tonight with these two people, this one person is not allowed to run in or else. The rest of these matches, Adam Cole, Jay Lethal, who cares? Red Dragon's going to run in? It doesn't matter. Glo- honor by whatever they call an impact? Eh, they can run in, who cares? But that Red Velvet Layla Hirsch match, we need to have a clean match here. So no Chris Statlander allowed. I think we should go back to work in the uh, managerial license. They should. At least, they, you know, when they had that managerial license. See, here's the thing back in the old days. Back in the old days, I, this, I, this always just blows my mind. Back in the old days, everyone involved in wrestling thought that the fans were marks, stupid, slack-jawed, hillbillies, just idiots. And uh, so they, but but for some reason they went out of their way to plug every possible pot, plot hole. Oh well, man, you know we got to make sure. To, in order for it to make sense, you know this person's got to have a managerial license. That's why they're allowed. But you know they plugged every single. Pl- now the story is, oh, we have great respect for these fans. These fans aren't marks. Don't call them marks. They're ticket-paying loyal customers. But meanwhile, there's just like one plot hole after another on every single show. It's like, dude, <laughs> it'd be nice if you like had respect for the fans and also plug plot holes. You know what I mean? 
Whatever. You, you would think. You would think. Look, I, when it comes to, like, th- that was one of the things with the AEW with their tag team division with the lax, you know, when it comes to, like, Young Bucks matches and things like that. And for me, it was like, why don't you just go with Lucha tag rules? It eliminates all that stuff about, you know, people jumping in and out and one referee, you know, Aubrey doing one thing and, and you know, Paul Turner doing another thing or whatever. Rick Scott doing another thing. He's the one who's probably the, you know, gets the most heat on that. But they should probably do something like that. And I wish... You know, and I will maybe we'll see it with Regal and with Moxley and that group that they're getting together with Brian Danielson and everything. But the idea of having guys at ringside, you know, because everybody's in a three or a four man crew, do what they do in Japan and have your team at ringside because then you can build in reasons to ban those people because they got involved in another match or something like that. Or there's a reason for them just to be out there because they're part of the team. You get this many seconds they're allowed to come to the ring and, and make it simple. Listen, this person here, he's, uh, he's all mad. Artist Dog. I don't think that's his actual name. By the he way, goes, it may not be Rick Scott. I, I think I may have really insulted that man. He goes, <laughs> plot holes have always existed in wrestling. Well, of course they've always... You're missing the point, geek. The point <laughs> is, they worked a lot harder to avoid these problems in the past than they do today. Yes. To the point where people still talk about what was in Baby Doll's envelope. Bro, there's a baby's doll, baby doll's envelope about six times on every Raw. No one talks about any of them because they happen all the time. It's a different, it's a different world. Don't make that comparison. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. That guy took it as a badge of honor that I called him a geek. Which one? Bro, if that's the case, have I got a cameo for you? <laughs> F4W Online. Bro, 50 bucks, I'll call you a geek for 10 minutes. In about 50 different ways. I've got a lot of practice of late. Yeah, after about five minutes of listing off all of his accolades and the shows that he has and the books that he's written. What are you talking about? I've heard. I went and I I, I looked. You know, every now and then I I, uh, let people know who I am. Mm -hmm. They already know. They spent 50 bucks. No, sometimes sometimes they get them for somebody else. They're like, I'm getting this for my dad. You know, he's, he's heard your voice or whatever, but he's not a fan. But I, need I like t- the guy that paid 50 bucks for you to tell him he's a geek over uh, WWE. You did that. I actually did. Do- Where was that one at? That was on the uh, the preview page. I know, but w- oh, there's a preview page? Yeah. That's and that I'm one saying. was up there? Yes. Oh, man. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, WWE has announced a new partnership for WrestleMania 38 to air live in movie theaters. WWE and Fathom Events are teaming together to bring WrestleMania 38 to movie theaters. Saturday, April 2nd, and Sunday, April 3rd. I hope so. The event will air live on Peacock and the WWE Network. Tickets can be purchased on Fathom Events' website or at the box office of participating movie theaters. It says there's a full list on the Fathom website. Uh, WrestleMania 38 will not be shown at movie theaters in Texas. Because I don't want you going to the movie theater, not the actual show. Don't, and you really should be on that blacked one hard out. for as much as you've been talking about tickets. They've gone with the old school blackout rules. Yeah, it's blackout <laughs> rules. You can't you can't go watch it in a theater in Texas because you know Texas ain't that big. So like you know if you're no, 900 miles tiny. away, you know you can't go to the movie theater. You got to get in your car and you know, yeah, if you, <laughs> yeah, if you're in Albaline or you know, my God, yeah, because yeah. what's not just Arlington? What? It's all of Texas. Yeah, all of like, Texas. <laughs> It's crazy. If you live somewhere in the south, you cannot. Uh, you got to go to the actual event. Yeah, drive the nine hours or whatever it is from the Rio Grande to Dallas. Enjoy that for two days. Two days of that too. Night one: Charlotte Ronda, Becky Bianca, KO show with Austin, Ray and Dominic versus Miz and Logan Paul, Drew McIntyre, Happy Corbin, and the Usos against Shinsuke Nakamura and the. Boogs. God, you're on that. And then night two, we got Lesnar and Reigns, McAfee, Austin Theory, Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville, AJ and Edge. I wonder if they'll sell more tickets because the jackass guy is is there in the movie theater on <laughs> Sunday. AJ and Edge. Got Zelina and Carmella versus Sasha and Naomi, Rhea and Liv Morgan and Natty and Shayna Baszler. RK Bro against the Street Profits Alpha Academy. That's the lineup. <laughs> So funny you know, over there. Well, I just, I'm Did they give you I... something when they were giving you that MRI? <laughs> no, but believe me. You it's, got the uh, giggles. I just, the thought of Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn, and I haven't seen Jackass in 
since Jackass was on MTV, I don't believe, but all of these characters that are on this show, I assume are going to be somehow working their way into the match, including Wee Man. Is that a, a safe bet for this match? Bro, I don't know. Zane? We haven't seen any of those dorks, so I, I, I think it's going to be a one-on-one match. All catches you catch can with uh, Johnny Knoxville. All show up there. <laughs> Maybe they all show up at the end and they, they gang up on Sammy, and that's how uh, old Knoxville gets his big win. Oh, by the way, speaking of Knoxville, Rick Knox. Rick Scott, that could be an insult for a lot of people, but Rick Knox was the AEW referee I was thinking of. Yeah. We have uh, Stand and Deliver, which is Ziggler, Braun Breaker, Imperium versus the Creeds versus MSK for the NXT Tag Titles. I'll talk about the women's match later. Tommaso Ciampa, Tony D'Angelo, L.A. Knight, and Gunther. And Carmelo Hayes, Santos Escobar, Grayson Waller, Solo Sokoa, and... Uh, and it damn sure better be Cameron Grimes for the NXT North American title. I'll talk about NXT 2.0 after the break because I got a I got a few things to say. But first, the news: WWE announcer long discussed, long awaited broadcasting deal in the Middle East and North Africa region Wednesday, in a partnership with NBC Group. No financials were disclosed, but they were big. I can tell you that much. The deal will see NBC's Shahid streaming on demand service become the home for WWE programming beginning next weekend with WrestleMania 38. All premium live shows, additional live Raw and SmackDown episodes, and more than 10,000 hours of the WWE Network library content. Good God almighty. We got more audio shows than they got any, uh, WWE Network library content. Think about that. Holy. We, got, we have 13,000 shows, so that's way more than 13,000 hours because some of these shows are long. Yeah. There's also a fr- maybe I should sell our library to uh, the M E N A, cash out. Stop having to report some of this news that just sickens me. I might need surgery money, so keep something in uh, escrow for me. Thank you. Live Raws and Smackdowns will be in Arabic. Will be one hour versions and will feature Arabic subtitles. Live. What was that again? Now. Oh, I see. Okay. Broadcast deal has been asked about or discussed on nearly everybody, every WWE quarterly investors call for the past few years. I'll bet it has. They want to know when they're going to get their money. <laughs> Raw on Monday night, 1.77 million viewers, 0.5, 18 to 49. Far ahead of second place. Before you go any further, we could be seeing a lot more Saudi Arabian stuff. Could we? Could we not? Of here? course we are. Was Saudi Arabia owning that channel after it uh, consolidated it from the people that they locked up in that Ritz-Carlton in 2017? But that's a a different story there. But, you know, I'm wondering now, since they've already got two events now, is this going to start being a quarterly thing? Or they, you know, it'll be very interesting. Now, obviously, the tours and you got to get people over there for all that sort of stuff, I guess. But... You know, with the logistics, but it it's hard to believe that money is not going to be talking and we're not going to be seeing a lot more Saudi Arabia, WWE stuff. An easier night of competition. Raw plays first in 18-49. to 49. Uh, Below Deck Mediterranean was second place. Uh, so they were number one on cable. Raw was second to Below Deck in women, however. Nearly doubled everything else in men 18-49, 118-34. to 34. Second in women, 12-34. to 34. More than doubled everything on cable, men 12-34. to 34. Staylight savings time pattern back in effect. Second hour higher rated than the first. Because people are outside playing. That's what happens. 1.78 million viewers in the first hour. 1.87 million viewers in the second hour. And then down to 1.66 million in the third hour. Looking at this pattern, they should do the Cody angle in the uh, second hour next week. But they've already they've already made up their mind now what, what would you do with it would you do it eight into nine obviously that's probably where you get your most visible eyeballs Bro, i'd start there, uh, yeah. i'd start plugging it at you know what you do actually here's an easy way to do it all i do is i try to work my way around their stupid storylines so so uh seth has said raw will not kick off until i get my match at wrestlemania so that means you can't start the show until you shoot the angle yeah. But the second hour is always higher rated at day, during daylight savings time, so it should be shot in the second hour. So the easy solution is Seth, his plane is delayed. So you do the first hour of Raw as he attempts to get to the building, and then, of course, he shows up right at 9. And then he says, now the show's not going to continue. Raw will only be one hour until I get my minute. And everyone cheers because they only want a one-hour Raw. But then, uh, you know, Cody shows up, and away we go. That's what I do. 
Do they should pay somebody to just try and figure out all the messes they've made? <laughs> they should? Yeah. Feels like we get paid to do that sometimes, trying to figure out all the messes that they've made. I have a feeling Vince should pay more for that job. You but should. actually, maybe not. I've seen some of them. Yeah, anyway. Well, who does that person report to? Because Vince. Well, the problem is they'd to report it. to Vince. <laughs> yeah. This person would need to outrank Vince, which I won't do unless I'm paid more than Vince and get stock options now that they got this new deal. You get one of those big old brontosaurus heads for the wall or whatever that he has? It's a tyrannosaurus, you whatever. idiot. No, there's a big difference. A brontosaurus had like a 90 foot neck. How are you going to put that in an office? <laughs> Stack of dimes. Hey, Brontosaurus did not have a neck like a, snack, a stack of dimes. It had a big, thick, long neck. Right up Vince's alley. Because he's a big game hunter, you know what I mean? Well, that's all the news. Now i got two <laughs> minutes to kill till we do the NXT report. So I'll just read some of these, because i got a lot here. i got so many uh, things here. Okay. Do you know? Yeah. So it says Alex Reynolds and John Silver do have numbers. Reynolds is number three. Silver is number four. Evil Uno is obviously number one. Stu Grayson is number two. Alan Angels is number five. Preston Vance is number 10. Anna J is number 99. And yes, yeah. Cole Cabana does not have a number. Double zero. What would be a good number for Colt? Everybody would say, oh, 69. No, that's tired. Can't go with 69 with Colt. Double zero is what I'm thinking. What do you think? I don't know. Negative seven. Well, we already got a negative one. Actually, we got we have negative one, so you can't. I don't even go number my friends, so I don't really think about it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Jay Lethal versus Adam Cole is on Dynamite tonight. What? What is your deal, bro? God, what did they give you when they did that MRI? A fentanyl drip? <laughs> Move on. Marcella says, can you tell Mike to knock off his potty language? Are you stop. Who said that? Marcello here. Ugh. Sorry, I hurt your virgin ears, Marcella. And why is it called Filthy Four Daily? Is it like when WWE called King of the Ring an Anya? It's like when WWE calls WrestleMania WrestleMania, but they won't use the word wrestle anywhere else. Why is it called it's Filthy history. Four Daily? Because there was a figure Four Daily for a long time, and now it's filthy. That's it. Don't Does overthink even this, remember? Marcello. Does anyone hit you off or even remember the newsletter anymore? Even remember the olden days? Yeah, I got somebody sent me a check the other day. Get out of here. I'm not, I'm not even For kidding. A, it's got to be a print subscription, I assume. <laughs> we haven't had a print newsletter in years. No, but somebody's sending you a check. What, yeah, for, for the print. They wanted the print newsletter. They sent me a check. I thought you meant the Observer. They actually no. wanted the Figure 4 newsletter. Yes. <laughs> that was really weird. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Oh, a lot of people reminiscing about the old F4W newsletter. The F4W were pretty insightful, this person said. I read some of the old ones in the archives. Brian's written rants were hilarious. Oh, thank you, Ed Ted 92 I like that Frank A. Gotch guy used to do as a uh, flying mayor. Used to give him a little bit of space in that newsletter. That 110 year old man, very salty, very. Well, uh, though I'll say this: as spicy as uh, Frank Gotch could be in there, he's still not as uh, as uh, salty as Lance Storm when expressing his opinions about modern wrestling. Wow. He likes some modern wrestling. I'm kidding. I just have some fun with that. Although, you know, Frank Gotch. Oh, look what this guy writes. With those flippy doos. The F4W are pretty insightful. I read some of the old ones in the archives. Brian's written rants were hilarious. You just read that. I know. Oh. I guess that was the only praise I got. <laughs> but you know, it got me thinking if only I could get Fauntleroy to actually put together the transcripts of this show, and then I could sell it as a newsletter every week. What about that idea? You make jokes. Somebody Would you might buy do that. the transcript if I had Fauntleroy put it together into a newsletter every week, everybody? Anybody? Oh, cool. You get to see my incoherence in print. Mm, a lot of no's. All right, let's talk about NXT 2.0. <laughs> yeah, NFT, a Frank wow. Gotch flying mare you NFT. Guys are all, you, you guys are all idiots. What, you're telling me listening is easier than reading? I find that hard to believe. Dude, how many people read anymore? I'm being sarcastic, you idiot. I was going to say, Jesus Golly. Christmas, M Mr. Author. Holy smokes. All right. Uh, Is that your excuse for why the books didn't sell? NXT. My books didn't sell? Get out of here, brother. 
All right, let's talk about this uh, NXT show. We had Solo Sokoa, Roderick Strong, North American Championship qualifying match, and Solo Sokoa won the match. It was a pretty good match. They both look good. It's Roderick Strong. You're not going to have a bad match. And so Solo Sokoa is now in that ladder match. We had some of the dumbest, most horrifically acted segments backstage with Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada. Although one of them actually was so bad, it was good, which we'll get to. But they're, uh, they're arguing backstage. See, they had a match last week when they were friends. They're still friends. They're, they're frenemies, as they call them. And uh, they, they're hanging out still, uh, acting poorly. So there's going to be a match later. Tony D'Angelo faced Dexter Loomis. And Tony goes for the crowbar. Indy grabs the crowbar. And then uh, what's-her-face uh, Persia grabs the crowbar from Indy. And then she has a tug-of-war with Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, Tony D'Angelo and uh, Persia Pratt had a tug-of-war. It took him a while to win, and then the crowbar flies into Dexter Loomis's face, right in the middle of the ring, which the referee somehow does not see. <laughs> you and, like that, uh, what's that little spin from the referee pirouette? Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> and so uh, that was the end, and then obviously, you know, Dexter's very angry, as we'll get to later. We had uh, Electra Lopez beating Fallon Henley. I have no idea how Fallon Henley is not on the main roster already. Same with the uh, the lady that uh, Robert Stone's talking to. I mean, ain't going to be long in developmental, brother. Mark my words. We had um, Braun Breaker and Robert Roode. Listen, I don't like to be that guy. Okay? I don't. Nobody cared about this match. I don't, if I get, if I hear, if you, I don't want to hear one person, whether it's on the chat, DJ Bantam, or whether it's on you, you can do it on YouTube because comments are stupid there anyway. But like, I do not want to hear that the crowd was into this match because this happens all the time in AEW. Like every now and then it'll be a match on AEW with no heat. And I'll have these, these, you cannot say one negative thing about AEW. Even if you're paid by Tony Khan, you can't say one negative thing about AEW or like, you know, you're going to get it. Oh, there was, what are you talking about? There was no heat. Brother, there was no heat, okay? And there was no heat for this match. Yes, at the very in the very last minute or two, when they did some near falls, they got the obligatory This Is Awesome chant. But for 90% of this match, nobody cared. Why? Well, I mean, as an honest man here, nobody was going to care about Braun Breaker and Robert Roode in the first place. But brother... You did no favors by beating Robert Roode in the middle of the ring on Raw by Dominic Mysterio. Pinned in the middle, clean. No interference, no Braun Breaker, Rick Steiner did nothing. He just got pinned in the middle of the ring. How could we, if we couldn't care before, how could we possibly care now? Well, nobody did. It's a dead match with Braun Breaker. He pins Robert Roode. Robert Roode, a former NXT champion for over a year. But bro, they did not care one bit about this guy. Do you realize that it, the, the, aside from the match where uh, Ziggler won the three-way and won the title, neither Rude or Ziggler have won a single match in like 50 appearances on this show? Oh, it wasn't 50, Brian. It was only, you know, six. Whatever. No one cared. So anyway, then we move on to uh, Grayson Waller and a kid. And uh, Grayson Waller beat this kid. And he is going on to the North American Championship qualifying match. And uh, afterwards, Carmelo Hayes gets in the ring. And he announces there's there's one spot left in a match he signed and, like, he's got complete creative control of. So he goes, you know what? We're going to have a, a match with all the losers next week. This is the term they use. All the losers are going to have a match. This is just like booking uh, the, the multi-person tag matches on Raw and SmackDown. All the losers are going to be in a match. We'll see which one of you is the most overachieving loser, and you'll get into the, uh, the North American title match. You want to put money on Cameron Grimes? In Listen, that, uh, let me talk about equation. Cameron Grimes. All right. They had a video package on this show with Cameron Grimes. And Cameron Grimes talks about how last week he was really upset because he had no path to WrestleMania. And how his father, he loved his father. They were super close. They watched wrestling. They were involved in wrestling. And and the last thing he said, the last thing I told my father was that I signed with NXT and I'm going to be a champion. 
And he goes, it's been three years, and look at this. I don't even have a path to WrestleMania. And they got pictures of him and his dad and, like, the whole shebang. And I watched this, and uh, as, as I'm sure many of you are, are well aware, there have been many, many angles in wrestling history that uh, have been built around people who have actually died, okay? And uh, probably the most infamous is uh, when Randy Orton did that promo about how, you know, Eddie Guerrero is in hell. After Eddie Guerrero had shoot legitimately died, he's doing a promo about how Eddie Guerrero is, is residing in the afterlife in hell. This did not work, did not get over. People hated it. And the thing is, you know, it's, it's wrestling. And, uh, and you are supposed to tell stories. And it's supposed to, you know, be real, even though it's not. And so I am not against using a real tragedy in a person's life to tell a story. But, number one, you know, I don't know Cameron Grimes' father, but my guess would be that Cameron Grimes' father would have been all right being part of an NXT storyline, you know, after he passed away. But on top of that... If you're going to do the storyline where my father died, I made him a promise. And you're going to pay it off by having Cameron Grimes win the match next week, go to WrestleMania weekend, win the ladder match, and become the NXT North American champion, and succeed and make his his deceased father happy, fine! But brother, if they screw this up, I don't expect him to lose. I do expect him to be in the match. But there's still that part of me that thinks, uh, you know, they're going to do something and he's not going to win and, you know, someone else. Bro, don't do that stuff. Like, I know. I want to believe you, too. I want to believe you. Don't do it. But I could see them putting a kid in there. And I just, I, and and have him be sad and be down on his luck and have all of this money, but I failed my father to build it into another match that he has on that show. That wouldn't surprise me at all. I think it's a waste of what they're doing, obviously, because. Again, I don't, would not invoke this stuff unless, again, you got a really good story for it. And I, I just, we'll see. We'll Here's see the thing. But to, to cut to the chase, because I ramble forever, don't do a storyline involving somebody who has passed away to get heat, okay? Don't ever do that. It we never, see. it never, ever works. If you want to use this, if you want to use somebody who has passed away in a storyline to to give everybody a happy ending and, and the person whose father passed away is crying in the ring because he did it for his father, that's fine. That's okay. But don't waste this storyline and then screw Cameron Grimes. That never, wor- it ne- name one time that has ever worked where you've used someone who's passed away to get heat and then, like, you you didn't pay it off and, like, the person... Name one time that's ever worked, ever. Look, when does any time somebody... I mean, honestly, depending on who the situation is as far as who's passed away, as far as using heat, whether it's ever it ever works at all. Because especially in this day and age, you got to be really careful about it. I mean, look, the Charlotte thing, and that's the problem, too, with a lot of this, is there you cannot... Their track record is awful. Wrestling's track record in general is awful, but their track record with any of this sort of stuff, with invoking anybody's name that has passed away, is usually awful, with the exception of Paul Bearer, who, again, because everybody will always talk about, well, this person wouldn't have minded it, Eddie wouldn't have minded it, this person wouldn't have minded it, and it's like, you don't know that, they've passed away, maybe they wouldn't, as much as they loved wrestling, as much as they dedicated their lives for wrestling, maybe they didn't want to do that, and they wouldn't like that. Now, Paul Bearer, I guess he's one of the exceptions that everybody said to a person, if you use him in something, it'll be fine. But real life, whatever, I just, that stuff being brought in and being, again, if this isn't even, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I just, I don't have any confidence in all in this. Well, believe it or not, I actually have confidence. I think he's going to win next week, and I think he's going to win the championship at WrestleMania weekend. It is a preemptive a bout of anger at the idea that this could be screwed up. Because when I watched it, I thought, this is this is what makes me mad. When I see something and it's like, this is impossible to screw up. But they like, do. That's the point. Yeah. You have to be like at a level of incompetence that is inconceivable to me to screw up this thing with Cameron Grimes. Do I do I have one hundred percent faith they're gonna do it right? Of course not. But like it's so unscrew upable that you have to go out of your way to like be horrible at your job to to screw this thing up right here. Anyway, the Creed brothers beat the Grizzled Young Vets. 
It's fine. It wasn't long. Nobody died. That's a positive. <laughs> Gunther and Duke Hudson was a 10 on the granny scale. This was like a 100-star match. Oh, my God. Duke Hudson... I don't have time to talk about... I'll talk about it on the Brian and Vinny show, the the segment that they did with Dexter Loomis drawing. But uh, it sets up <laughs> this match with Gunther and Duke Hudson. And, uh, bro, this did not have a lack of heat. They start wrestling at about two minutes in. Gunther hits him with this chop. And uh, and you could hear it in, in uh, Oregon. These fans, they start going nuts. They they chanted what you said at the beginning of the show, which is an FCC violation. They're going out of their minds. And these dudes are like the same size. And everyone's used to like, you know, Walter beating up these little dudes. But how? here's two dudes about the same size. And they're Whoa. beating the crap out of each other. But same height. <laughs> Gunther is just double beating the crap out of poor Duke Hudson. And in the finish, he throws him in the corner. He goes, this is for you, Persia. He gives this guy two thunderous chops. He kicks him right in the face, and then he power bombs him and pins him. Oh, my God. This turned the whole show around for me. Like, if I ever hated NXT, I apologize for anything I ever said about him. I'd almost forgive screwing up Cameron Grimes. Almost. Not quite. <laughs> But that man, this fact, match was fantastic. That and the fact that his woman was the one who got him into that mix oh, is even better. <laughs> this was great. And then it was Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray beating Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai. And then in the funniest thing ever, I'm sure like one of uh, uh, either JC or, or whatever, I can never get their name. Gigi. Gigi and JC. Gigi, Joel, Joel and JC, Jane, whatever. One of them's got to be hurt because uh, Io and Kaylee win. And then they're like, we're going to cash in. But we don't care about these tag belts. We want the uh, championship match at uh, whatever to be a four-way singles match for the NXT title. Which, for some reason, makes JC and GG mad. So maybe they're not hurt because there was a brawl. But anyway, that was the show. Back in a moment, Observer Live. So one last thing about this this NXT main event thing. It was like, <laughs> it's so wacky. Because the whole storyline is uh, GG and JC, they hate all these teams. So they don't want to, to defend these uh, these titles at uh, over WrestleMania weekend. And uh, so EO and Kaylee win. And then they just like bury the tag titles. They're like, we don't want these belts. We're going to uh, we're going to cash in and the match with uh, with Mandy and and uh, and what's her name is going to be a it's going to be a four way now. Cora Jade. So it's Cora Mandy, Jade. Mandy, Cora Jade, EO and uh, Kaylee Ray. It's now a four way. So for some reason, this makes uh, Gigi and JC angry. That now they don't have to worry about defending their titles. So they help attack the uh, Kaylee Rainio Shirai. And then, and then who should run down to make the save but Cora Jade, who was guaranteed a singles match over WrestleMania weekend. But now she's in a four way, whereas they say her chances of winning are now only 25%. But bro, she's happy as a clam. She's running wild and running off all the heels, and she's happy as can be. I'm like, shouldn't JC and uh, Gigi be happy and Cora should be angry? Instead, it's the other way around. They're angry, and Cora's totally happy being in a four-way now for this title. So anyway, whatevs, dude. I don't book this show. <laughs> I just watch it. Mm. And I'm going to be watching AEW tonight. That I'll watch. We'll talk about uh, both these shows with Dave on Observer Radio, and then back tomorrow here, and then uh, Brian and Vinny's show on uh, Thursday night. So check it out. Cameo at 4 w Online. Don't miss out. They're coming in hot, it says here. A lot of fun. And uh, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Mike, as always, callers and listeners up to the studio. Apologize to Dom on behalf of Mike. Talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.